I want to welcome in our first guest, Alfredo Rodriguez. Alfredo worked on Rick Perry's Texas gubernatorial campaign in 2006. He was the deputy campaign manager and political director. Great to see you, Alfredo. Thanks for joining. Thank you, John. All right. So you've been through this fight at the state level, but as political director of a, of a large state, big time gubernatorial campaign, Rick Perry's big budget race, you dipped your toe in the D.C. pond quite a bit. You, you understand the inner workings. Do you think we see a deal by the end of the week or does the president have to resort to an emergency executive order? Well, you know, John, if, if it hasn't been said already, I'd like to put the Democrats on notice. Um, that their uh, political posturing, their vitriol towards President Trump and his border security plans will have uh, a, an adverse effect and will determine their fate in 2020. And I believe it's going to be up and down the ballot from President of the United States all the way down to dog catcher. Uh, you know, the single most important responsibility of government is to protect and um, defend its citizens. And Democrats continue to be obstructionist on that. Uh, they continue to um, abdicate that responsibility and they continue to fail at it miserably. Uh, you know, we have a real crisis and a real emergency at the border and we need to get something done. And President Trump has put together uh, a plan to do just that. And Democrats continue to refuse to negotiate uh, and protect our citizens. You know, Alfredo, one of the things that bothers me is the complete absence of common sense on the left side of the aisle, on the Democratic side of the aisle. So I want to talk to you about that for a moment. You're a Texan. You worked on, on Rick Perry's successful gubernatorial campaign. You understand the situation at the border possibly better than, than most guests I have. It was within the crosshairs of your political job. One of the things that really bothers me is when I hear Democrats say, well, all the drugs are being intercepted and coming in at ports of entry. Well, to me, that's such a ridiculous talking point. Well, of course, they're being intercepted where the dogs and the sensors and the ICE agents and the X-ray machines are. We have no way of knowing just how many more drugs, how much more tonnage is coming across that porous southern border, right? But it's definitely coming across there, isn't it, from your experience? Absolutely. We continue to have record amounts of heroin and fentanyl cross our border daily. Uh, and that is, con that is continuing to ravage and destroy communities, uh, take lives, particularly um, youth. Uh, and, and so it's a it is a real problem uh, that uh, that we don't have barriers uh, all throughout the border. Um, and, and let's not forget, you know, uh, Democrats have in the past supported fencing and barriers along the southern border. Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama are on record saying that border walls are necessary to uh, protect our southern border. Uh, Nancy Pelosi's handpicked chairman of agriculture has said, give President Trump the five point seven billion to build the wall. Right. Her handpicked chairman of armed services has said border walls work. So this is nothing but political posturing from Democrats uh, so that they can have uh, an appeasement to their uh, to their left wing base. Well, Mark Morgan, Obama's uh, CBP chief, Customs and Border Protection chief, also said he's with President Trump and walls work. Now, clearly, the reason the Democrats want to cap on these beds is so that when the beds are full, the Democrats can turn around and say, well, we got to catch and release again. And that's what I believe South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham feels because he says Trump should not take the deal if there's a cap on those ICE detention beds. Alfredo, let's listen to the senator. They're willing to give the president a little more money for the wall, but in return, they want to limit the number of bed spaces available to house violent criminals. This goes back to AOC's belief that ICE should be abolished. So the bottom line is, how can you get money for a wall and at the same time limit bed spaces for violent offenders and say you've solved the immigration problem? You're actually incentivizing more illegal immigration by reducing the bed space and it undercuts any money you would get for a wall. He can't sign that bill. I mean, Alfredo, that's the Democrats desire, right? Limit the number of beds. And when you don't have any more beds, turn around and say, well, we've got nowhere to house these illegal aliens. Catch and release them. And they'll, oh, they'll show up for their court appearances because they're such wonderful people. You're absolutely right. And Senator Graham uh, could not have said it better. Uh, the, the rationale for Democrats wanting to limit the number of beds is so if we only have, let's say, 100 beds to detain uh, criminal illegal aliens that cross our border, but uh, 500 come across the border, then 400 are going to be left roaming our communities, roaming in our neighborhoods. Right. And who knows what havoc criminal activities that they might uh, perform. Yeah, look, I mean, I, I think that's the concern, going back to what I said a bit earlier. 
Most common sense Americans, the people we call the normal Americans, those outside the Beltway, those outside of New York City and Los Angeles, those elitist bubbles, most Americans understand that if you let a gang member who came here illegally go, chances are they're not going to show up to see the immigration judge when they're supposed to. But for some bizarre reason, Alfredo, the Democrats keep lying to the American people, telling them that this isn't happening, that drugs aren't coming across, that there aren't criminals in these caravans. I think the president understands that. And it looks like his acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney, does as well, because Mulvaney says we could see another shutdown by the end of the week. Uh, it's it's certainly possible, and the president certainly has that prerogative. Let's listen to Mick Mulvaney really quickly. I have a piece of sound because I want to get your comments on that. Let's say, for sake of this discussion, that the Democrats prevail and the hardcore left-wing Democrats prevail. There was a Democrat congresswoman who put out a tweet Thanks. yesterday about zero dollars for uh -huh. DHS. So let's say that the hardcore left wing of the Democrat Party prevails in this negotiation and they put a bill on the president's desk with, say, zero money for the wall or 800 million, some absurdly low number. How does he sign that? He cannot in good faith sign that. It takes a presidential signature for the spending bill but to can you imagine? director. He had a job much like Mulvaney's now. Big part of the chief of staff's job is to be the president's point man on the Hill. Do you agree with Mulvaney? I do. If uh, if the Democrats certainly lowball the president with something like $800 million or, or even zero funding for a border wall, then he has every prerogative to do what's right and to protect our uh, our country, to protect our citizens, to protect our communities, uh, and, uh, and, and move around some funds to go ahead and build a wall. Um, you know, and, and it's not just criminal illegals that pose a, a problem here in, in the United States. Uh, you know, illegal aliens across our border are continuing to or overburden our schools. Right. They're crowding right. our hospitals. They're depleting America's safety net. They're living here for free. And um, and, and, and that's just un-American. Yeah, look, we had a uh, <clears throat> going back to criminal illegals. We had that shooting in broad daylight, that cold blooded murder in broad daylight on a New York City train platform where an MS-13 gang member basically blew the brains out of a, a rival 18th Street gang member, broad daylight, crowded train platform in Ocasio-Cortez's district. NYPD was never allowed to check his immigration status. And I was told by sources in the department that they were being blocked by the de Blasio administration from cooperating with ICE to determine if the killer was not illegal. They eventually did. But had they cooperated, this guy might have been caught beforehand, before hundreds of people on that platform were put at risk. And that goes back to the very first point I made uh, when I came on air with you, is that th this political posturing um, and this vitriol that uh, the Democrats have toward President Trump and his uh, border security plans is going to have a severe effect on the elections in 2020. Yeah. Americans will hold them accountable. As law enforcement officers continue to be harmed and murdered, as sons and daughters and spouses continue to be harmed and murdered at the hands of criminal illegal aliens, Democrats are going to be to blame for that. I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. All right. Before I let you go, Alfredo, I want to talk to you about California Governor Gavin Newsom. Now, Newsom is expected to announce that he's pulling the National Guard troops from the California Mexico border. The California Democrat is reportedly planning to sign an executive order getting those troops out of there ahead of his state of the state speech tonight. Now, Newsom is expected to say the border emergency is a manufactured crisis and that his state won't be part of political theater. I mean, has this guy spoken to local law enforcement? Does he speak to his California Highway Patrol, his sheriffs? They know this isn't a manufactured crisis, don't they? They absolutely know it's not a manufactured crisis. And, uh, you know, Governor Newsom is in for a real surprise because if he pulls those National Guard troops, if he pulls the security at the border and lives are harmed and lives are murdered, the blood will be on his hands. All right, Alfredo Rodriguez, deputy campaign manager for Rick Perry's 2006 campaign, also his political director. Alfredo, thanks for your insights. We'd love to have you back on this. Thank you. Appreciate it, John. All right, coming up, Senators Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren both officially launched, oh, you knew this was coming, their 2020 campaigns over the weekend. Now, could either one of them pose a real challenge to Donald Trump? Do you think either Klobuchar right there on the left, who looked like an angry snowman, or Elizabeth Warren, and we all know what she lied about. Do you think either one of them could actually pose a threat to Donald Trump in 2020? Give us a call. 877-NEWSMAX, 877-639-7629. Tell us what you think. If either one of these women could pose a threat to President Trump, we'll be right back.
President Trump's new tax law cut your taxes by over $5 trillion. Now you can benefit and reduce your taxes to zero. It's possible. The new best-selling guide, The Trump Tax Cut, shows you how. The Trump Tax Cut by tax expert Eva Rosenberg reveals hundreds of tax deductions, loopholes, and money-saving secrets in the new law. Medical, mortgage, educational deductions. Buy a new car for up to $40,000 and write it off. You'll find a major loophole that gives you an immediate 20% cut in your tax rates. Millions are taking advantage of this new loophole. Newsmax says the Trump Tax Cut book helps you save tens of thousands of dollars overnight. Before you file your taxes, get the Trump Tax Cut Guide in bookstores everywhere or check out the free offer and save almost $25 with shipping. Go on.